What is going on guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. My name is always is Face Jasper and today I'm making a video I've been wanting to make for such a long time. Um, it is bench pressing and um, pretty much going over the form if you are a beginner or even more advanced. Um, I made a lot of mistakes bench pressing in the past and I finally, I think at least, finally figured out what works uh, for me and what's really the best way to go about bench pressing, the safest way and um, you know pretty much going over the form and uh, why and how. So let's just jump into this video. If you do enjoy this video, please leave a rating for me. Just give me like a thumbs up or something or if you don't like it, you can also thumb down but I please don't dislike the video. It does make me really sad. Uh, but no, if you have some constructive criticism, leave it in the comments. Obviously, I'm open for everything. I'm not the all-knowing god guru, but I'm just saying I think uh, with this tutorial, I can really help you if you start out with benching and prevent a lot of issues that I've developed over the past few years because I've been benching wrong. So let's just jump into it. First and foremost is the warming up. And the warm up, usually a lot of people neglect it. Same with me, I never did really a mobility warm up. So as you can see, the clips are playing right now. I'm doing some shoulder rotator cuff mobility warm up. Uh, this is pretty much to warm up your rotator cuff muscles. And if you don't know what your rotator cuffs are, it's pretty much, I'll put it on the screen right now and I'll read it. Your rotator cuff is made up of muscles and tendons that keep the ball of your upper arm bone. So your shoulder is a cup and it has a ball and it does move like this so that's how you move your arm right um uh, it keeps the ball of your upper arm bone in your shoulder socket that's the socket it also helps you raise and rotate your arm so it, it pretty much the rotator cuff is super super important uh, without it without having uh, mobility there or flexible there are uh, you're gonna have um, very stiff movement and that's something you don't want so a shoulder mobility warm-up is very essential in my uh, point of view it's very very important you should always start out with it I did some with a little barbell and also with some dumbbells uh, making sure everything is warmed up so I I would say go for this for like 20 reps and then see where you end up and if you feel warm enough and you feel good you feel comfortable uh, then you can start your warm-up for the bench press so I do start up with warm-up sets on a bench press without any weight. You don't want to warm up with weight on the bar, in my opinion. I think um, getting the movement, get the blood flow a little bit and going through and over the movement is more important than already adding on weight to warm up. All right, the first thing we're going to be looking at is the feet. We're going to go from down upstairs. So the first thing we're going to talk about is feet. Um, I suggest and I think the best way to do it is have your feet firmly planted on the ground. When you are bench pressing, uh, you pretty much need your body to be in a stable position so you can bench press uh, in a safe way and really concentrate on that chest. Um, you don't want to press through the shoulders or the triceps as much. Obviously, you're going to use some triceps, but uh, you want to you want to press through the chest as much as possible. And with having your feet firmly on the ground, this is going to help you stabilize your body and giving it more power if you are if you need more power. With having your heels on the ground, you can firmly put your feet into the ground. So when you're pushing a little bit more weight and you're struggling a little bit, you have a more stable position and you can actually plant your feet even more through uh, in the ground so it can help you get it up as like a counterweight, as you could say that. Um, I'm also going to show you a clip of how not to do it. Um, obviously, with a little bit less weight, you can uh, the feet doesn't matter as much. Um, but I would still suggest put your feet, feet on the ground, put them at a little bit of an angle, I, I'm going to show you guys on the screen right now, put them a little bit more backwards uh, than your knees are. This gives you uh, more leverage when you push. The second thing we're going to talk about is the arch in the lower back. Uh, pretty much there's three points of contact of your body or like, yeah, well, three on the bench. It is your butt, it is your upper back and it is your head. So. Um, and also, obviously, the feet are touching the ground, but it's not on the bench. So the arch is there, um, so it gives you your chest a little bit more room to work. Uh, what we're doing, though, is we're contracting our scapula like this and then pressing it downwards. So I'm going to show you in the video. Um, retract. Oh, don't want to touch the mic. We're retracting the scapula, so that pretty much means our shoulder blades get together. Uh, when I press them together and then downward. And this movement will make your arch in the lower back uh, possible. 
you cannot see it too well in the video because I have a very loose piece of clothing on. Uh, but that's a little bit of an arch. It doesn't have to be a crazy arch. You see a lot of power lifters do like a crazy, crazy arch. You don't need to do that. That's just to um, make the range of motion a little bit smaller. But since we're not going for uh, for that, we want to go um, for a very... Um, we want to go for a clean, uh, full range of motion uh, bench press with this. So we don't need a crazy arch, just a little small arch uh, that will really help you. By retracting the scapula and pressing it downwards, we're going to make sure that we uh, use our shoulders as less as possible, as least as possible, it's better English. Uh, we want to use our shoulders as least as possible. I see what I used to do is just lay flat on the bench, have my elbows flared out super high, and then pressing, and that... If I, if I do it like this, if I press it with my elbows flared out like this and with a straight back and no arch or anything, I'm gonna press a lot through the shoulders and it's also, a, it puts a lot of pressure on the shoulder, which is obviously a, not a good thing. So that was my mistake when I started bench pressing, that I didn't know that I pretty much had my elbows too much flared out um, to, I, my elbows were too much flared out, uh, the bar was way too high for me and I was pressing with the wrong muscles and, and that really messed me up. But Finally now, it doesn't mess me up again. So, the next thing I want to talk about is, um, as I said, as I mentioned before, is the hand placement, the elbows, and then also where you bring the bar. Uh, I think this is something they call the J curl, but I'm not really sure. But, um, for me, I have my hands uh, placed a little bit wider than shoulder width, uh, but this is really personal preference. Um, you don't want to go too close because that makes you press all the way through your triceps. Don't de definitely don't go too close, um, but play with the width. Would you like? Obviously, we all have very s different length of arms, so I can't really tell what works best for you. But make sure you find this out. The next thing I want to do is tell you guys that you want to need to flare your elbows in or you want to squeeze your elbows in it's very very important um, as i said before if you flare too much out you're going to press way too much with the front deltoids and that's something that we don't want to do so you want to bring the bar down to like the lower chest area um, a little bit less uh, a little bit lower than the nipple area is what i really like but anything from nipple down is okay obviously you don't want to go to belly button or something um, but in this area the lower chest to like the top of your abs is the best area to bring it down to so if you do that your your elbows are automatically going to flare in because otherwise you can't make that angle and then you want to press up the next thing we're going to talk about is time uh, so hypertrophy is pretty much time under tension pretty much time under tension is how long your muscle has been working for uh sets or reps and uh pretty much you want to do the exercise in such a slow manner uh, that the hypertrophy, so the, the gaining muscle, is optimal for your body. Um, I don't want to go into it too detailed, but pretty much you don't want to go too fast because um, that's just not the way to go. Um, you have you get a lot more benefits if you go a little bit slower. So I would say go like a two three second, like realistically speaking, go like two three seconds down, hold it for like a, for like a little second, and then push up. Um, with some power, you know, this, this, you don't have to be that slow uh, when you push up. The negative is very, very important than this. Make sure you go down in a slow manner. That's how you control the weight. That's how you really can control how your chest is feeling. And I personally think that, um, I personally feel like if you do it very slow, the pump, the contraction, everything is just so much better um, that even the weight doesn't really matter. It's very, very hard to do 12 reps with a very controlled slow movement instead of doing 12 reps with very, very fast uncontrolled movement. And the last thing I want to talk about is weight and when to add weight and when to know how to add weight. Um, so as you know, I've been completely starting over with all of the bench press that I've been doing. Uh, because of I in the past I did some very very bad bench pressing so it really messed up my shoulder um, so I have to like start square one but it doesn't mean you can't make gains because the weight doesn't really matter to a certain point to a certain level so it's it's okay if you start with just a bar or like five pounds or ten pounds on each side you don't have to worry about all that just make sure your form is on point if you do 12 reps I would say if you go for muscle growth if you do 12 clean reps with a very controlled slow paced making sure you your contraction is okay you feel everything well and your your form is just on point then you want to start start adding weight and i don't want you guys to just throw on 45 pound plates because 
realistically speaking, I see a lot of guys just do just pumping up weight, and then your 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 form is gonna lack, and you get all sorts of and injuries and this is the stuff that I did wrong in the past so I want to definitely recommend you guys not doing that going very slow and steady you want to go for the long run here guys it's much more important than going for some quick strength gains because it's just bullshit and you're just gonna injure yourself and and long term that's that means that you get problems like I do like I messed up the right shoulder then now my chest is not developing as much as my left one it just sucks um, so definitely start with a good base, a good form base, and then uh, start growing from there. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. I wanted to talk about the bench press. I hope you this helps you out. If you have any questions or stuff, or maybe other techniques that you like, leave them in the comment section down below. And I'll, um, I love talking to you guys. As always, leave a video. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Very, very soon, hopefully. Deuces!